Hello everyone, I am Asmodai. Welcome back to Asmodai's Workshop. And today we are dealing with dreadnoughts. Not just your regular old box knots, but your new redemptive dreadnoughts and especially the ballistas dreadnought. Today we're doing a Deathwing variant of it and let's get right to it. So for this dreadnought, I am going to be working on it in separate pieces. Uh, this ballistas dreadnought is actually push fit from the Leviathan box from the opening at 10th edition. And I love that it's push fit because it means I can work on it in separate pieces and it's a whole lot easier to tackle. So I am putting down the base coat here and it looks a little spotty, but of course I'll go over it a couple of times to get a nice thick coat. For the most part, this bottom half is gonna be almost all bone. There will be some parts of lead belcher um, for the mechanical actuators and rotating hip joints, but for the most of it, it's just going to be that nice bone terminator color I have. You always want to try to apply light colors like this in very thin layers building up to a nice opaque layer. Uh, if not, it always has a chance of coming off a little bit streaky or chunky, and that's something we want to try to avoid as much as possible. Alrighty then, now that we're done with the bottom half of the uh, dreadnought, we are going to go ahead and move on to the weapons that go on either side. And since this is a ballistas dreadnought, it has dual or twin linked las cannons for one arm and it has some rocket pods for the other. Just like the uh, torso, we're going to go ahead and paint up each side with a, a nice liberal amounts of bone colors here. Uh, this mix is a 50-50 mix of your shoddy bone and pallid lich. And it gives a nice cream color that tints very easily with Airgrax or Shade and some other uh, sepia tones to kind of give that nice bone look. Here I am doing up the uh, missile pod. And just like before, we're gonna go ahead and do some more thin layers until we get a nice thick layer that gives us a good color consistency. And then we'll move on to the actual main body and the sarcophagus. Alrighty then, now we're painting on up to the back half of the sarcophagus. We're going ahead and get on that Mechanicus logo, get up around the little exhaust ports and uh, their little protective panels. It's okay if the paint job doesn't look always exactly perfect. We'll be able to kind of fix it on up and cover it up with some good old weathering. So for the bottom of the sarcophagus here, I am leaving the kind of exhaust pipes and exhaust tips um, bare from the white. I'm gonna go ahead and put those either with lead belcher or some iron hand silver on them. I like having metallic pipes. It makes them nice and gritty, especially when you go over a nice wash of a uh, non oil or Urgrax or shade. You can totally paint them white if you want to and make it look like the paint's chipping off. We will be doing some paint chip weathering, but we'll get to that later. Alrighty then, and now we are doing the top of the sarcophagus, uh, the front armor plate. Same thing as before, we're gonna go ahead and put on a couple of thin layers of the uh, bone mixture, get it all looking nice. Now you can go over the purity seals with the bone texture or the bone mixture. It just makes it a bit easier when you wanna get a nice bright red or have a, like a weathered um, paper look for the um, purity seals. But you can also do that by just putting white on there and then putting some washes over there to give it a nice consistency. Here I went ahead over my purity seals just with some uh, Vallejo white and I'm touching them on up with some ball red to just make them kind of pop out. Moving on to the actual sarcophagus here, um, I'm going ahead and painting its uh, logo or emblem on its chest with some Caliban green. 
most Deathwing heraldries are done with either green, red, or their bone color. In this case, I decided to do green just to kind of give it some nice pop and some color variants. Alrighty then, now we are starting to do the gun barrels. We are going to be doing these in some lead belcher. Just gives a nice metal rustic tone. I'm also going to be doing the cables um, on the side of the sarcophagus with some lead belcher. I will probably go back through and do some with some iron hands just for some metal difference. And I'm also going to do the edging of the sarcophagus in lead belcher so that when I put some washes over it, it looks nice and old and ancient and like it's been used a whole heck of a lot. With metallics, when you're painting on white, you'll probably need to do a couple of uh, coats over it. The metallics can be kind of thin and they don't always show up as nicely uh, if it's not like painted onto a blacker or a darker color. And here I am starting to go ahead and put that lead belcher onto our cables, power cables and connectors. Just starting to tie up a lot of these minis last little details. Um, nice thing too is that since this guy is push fit, a lot of the rotating mechanics for the weapons uh, work very smoothly. They don't have to be all glued into place and you don't have to worry about accidentally gluing a piece tight. So it's actually rather nice to work on this. I could have taken off the arms, but honestly for painting the cables, it was just easy enough to just rotate the arms up and paint underneath them. And on the back of the missile launcher, I'm going to go ahead and paint the uh, exhaust barrels a little, with a little bit of lead belcher, just to look like they've really been used a lot and a lot of missiles have been flying out of them. And it just kind of breaks up that detail. And I'm also going to go ahead and do the cog around the uh, skull on the back with some lead belcher as well. So as you can see, I have done my weapons with red. Deathwing, one of their big things is having their weapons being red, just gives them a nice contrast and it's one of their colors. So I wanted to pay homage to this by painting the main assembly of the twin link glass cannons red and especially the, the little side bolters on them and the rocket launcher. I didn't paint the tips of the twin link glass cannons red just because these guys have been probably firing nonstop and uh, I wanted to show some more weathering on them, like the paint's all kind of burnt off and it's just down to its base metal. Alrighty then, and now we are painting up some of the last little lights and um, optics on this dreadnought. I did most of them in red, but I thought about switching on up with a little bit of uh, Vallejo's fluorescent orange, just to kind of give it a nice color variance, and it looks nice. It's better than just a regular green or blue you would see for uh, targeting aspects. And now we are going to begin the fun part, which is weathering and washing. First, I'm uh, going over with some nun oil. Everywhere there is a metallic, whether it is gold or silver, will be hit with some kind of nun oil wash. It just really brings out a lot of contrast and uh, shading to them. And it gives it a nice kind of greasy look. And uh, from here, we're actually applying some Urgrex Earthshade now, uh, starting with the missile launcher and working our way across the body. And that's just gonna give us a nice color variance and we'll just make it look like this guy is trudged through the mud. As we finish up with the Urgrax, we're getting to one of my favorite parts, which is chipping. And um, all I did was I took one of my uh, mini holders, like the, the foam. I went ahead and tore up that and made a little sponge out of it, dabbed it some Abaddon Black. And what I'm doing is just very gently tapping in one place, trying to get a nice random pattern of uh, black paint. And this will look at like the paint uh, that is painted over the ceramide has been chipped off and worn away. And this will kind of give us our nice weathering for our pieces being look like they have been through hell and back. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the uh, emblem on his chest. So I went in with some Caliban and here I'm doing some Moot. And this will just be my secondary highlight on there just to add a bit of depth to it. Now 
All right, for some last little parts here, I'm doing some select edge highlighting around the top just to kind of bring back some definition to the panels from all the weathering and all around just gives it a nice, good, you know, congruent look. I'm also gonna do a little bit of front um, armor shading around the uh, armor that protects the sarcophagus. And then after this, I'm gonna go on over with a sepia wash. Um, this is a little bit of a lighter wash and it's very thin down, so it's gonna be almost like a glaze. And this is gonna help pull out some warm tones and really give the mini some life. And be as liberal as you want to with applying these washes. Honestly, for me, the more the better. You can always take them back a bit and worst case, you can always paint over them. All right, then, as I put on this final glaze, we should be all done, and let's see how this bad boy looks. I think the final Ballista's Dreadnought has turned out great and he looks freaking phenomenal and it looks like he's ready to blow apart some Tyranids. If you've liked what you've seen so far and you want to see more, go ahead and hit like and comment and subscribe. I will be doing more 40k stuff and more long form stuff coming out here soon. And I want to say thank you to Warmonger Forge for recommending this guy a long time ago. Uh, sorry I did not get the video sooner. But uh, thank you all for watching, and you guys have all been amazing. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Also, repent.